Good morning, everyone. My name is Rifka Hellman, and I'm the clinical coordinator and clinical assistant professor at SUNY Downstate's Diagnostic Medical Imaging Program here in Brooklyn, New York. I conducted this research with my student researchers, Charlene Nelson, Itzel Ravas, and Hannah Snyder. Ours is a study of cardiac screening tests utilized by New York State rheumatologists in treating patients with rheumatoid arthritis. We have no disclosures. Rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease characterized by pain, stiffness, and swelling of joints, which may lead to impaired motor function. Approximately 1% of our population, which is 1.3 million people in the United States alone, is affected by this disease. The inflammation of arthritis primarily affects the synovium. The synovium is a thin membrane, right here, that surrounds and lines the joint capsule. It also secretes synovial fluid, this green area, that helps ensure smooth and easy joint movements. Uh, many times, the inflammation moves to other organs, particularly to the endothelium of blood vessels. This can, in turn, cause damage and plaque buildup, which we know as atherosclerosis, which then causes a raise in blood pressure, also known as hypertension, and then reduces blood flow to the heart and other organs. Within our population, 8 to 12 percent of rheumatoid arthritis patients suffer from other systemic manifestations of the disease. Um, some manifestations can be neurologic, hematologic, there's some sometimes gastrointestinal, skeletal, ocular, oral, um, pulmonary, renal, endocrine, skin, and what this study, our study focuses on, is cardiac. While pericarditis is the most common of the cardiac complications of RA patients, arthritis also has been found to accelerate the atherosclerotic process and cause premature coronary artery disease, contributing to a higher mortality and morbidity. Although the rate of cardiovascular deaths among patients with rheumatoid arthritis is decreasing, we still suspect that there are many among the RA population that are unknowingly suffering from heart complications. There is actually a field that explores strategies to improve the cardiovascular care of patients with rheumatic disease, which is called cardiorheumatology. In their cardiorheumatology study, Prasad et al. found that cardiovascular deaths in RA patients is actually caused primarily by ischemic heart disease, the incidence of which is doubled in those with RA when compared with age-matched individuals. What's more, the risk of cardiovascular disease is not only greater for RA patients, but the prognosis has been found to be poorer. Because of the increased mortality and morbidity, the authors stress the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. Holland et al. suggests that a lack of clinical studies has left, has left open the question of how best to assess and reduce risk of cardiovascular disease in rheumatoid arthritis patients. So numerous recommendations exist, but this only poses a complication as no single ideal clinical course of action has yet to be identified by health professionals. One set of recommendations commonly used for cardiovascular risk management in RA is set by the European League Against Rheumatism. However, this article suggests that these guidelines have strict qualifiers like rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP, disease duration, and extra articular manifestation, which I guess it excludes a large portion of the RA population. Um, some physicians instead opt to abide by local guidelines, causing inconsistency among practices. Additionally, these authors speculate that the potentially lengthy or complicated nature of these recommendations may discourage physicians from completing them thoroughly. They also suggest that a call for routine screening for cardiovascular disease in rheumatoid arthritis patients who may not be symptomatic is sufficiently justified in the literature. In a study by Correo et al., echocardiography demonstrated a greater incidence of valvular thickening, insufficiency, stenosis, and nodules. The authors of that study suggest that abnormal sonographic appearances of valve structures may be attributed to fibrosis subsequent to extraauricular uh, inflammation, which occurs with arthritis. Additionally, Echocardiogra echocardiography was effective in detecting pericardial effusions, 
which proved to be prevalent in the cases highlighted in the study. Left ventricular diastolic dysfunction and aortic root changes were also noted, interestingly, in many of the cases. So these authors emphasize the importance of echocardiographic assessment of RA patients, even those who are asymptomatic for heart disease. Our study investigates uh, when and or if rheumatologists refer their patients for cardiac screening to rule out cardiovascular disease. So our study was approved by the SUNY Downstate Institutional Review Board. We sent surveys to 139 rheumatologists in New York State. We we got this list of rheumatologists off the Health Grades website based out of Denver, as well as uh, individual doctors at SUNY Downstate in Brooklyn. Uh, we conducted this research between March and April of 2018. So we used Qualtrics to deploy our survey. We sent out 155 surveys, 16 were undeliverable. Like the system couldn't find these doctors' emails. So a total of 139 were sent out with about a little over a little less than a 10 percent response rate rheumatologists were asked questions about management of rheumatoid arthritis patients with regard to cardiac screening in both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients cardiac screening tests that we included in our questionnaire included um, echocardiography ekgs which is electrocardiography exercise stress tests with a halter monitor and echo stress tests, either exercise or debutamin studies, either one. So in response to the question, when do you refer RA patients for an echo or an echocardiogram, the responses were as follows. Um, the doctors who responded practiced anywhere from one to 48 years, average years of practice being 17 and a half years. 77% of them would um, refer their patients for an echo only when they were symptomatic, while 8% referred even asymptomatic patients for a routine echo. 15% said other, which um, means that they, uh, we left a little free text area open for them to respond. And when they hit other, they wrote that patients referred based on an abnormal physical exam, EKG or chest X-ray, or any other heart-related symptoms. asked, when do you refer RA patients for an electrocardiogram or an EKG? 62% of doctors referred only their symptomatic patients. 23% of doctors referred asymptomatic patients. 8% um, said never. They never refer their patients for EKGs. And 8% said other, which means they only referred for, again, for an abnormal physical exam or low lipid level. I know it says 61% here, and I said 62. It came out at 61.54%. Uh, when asked, when do you refer RA patients for an exercise cardiac stress test or that halter monitor test? 70% um, of doctors only refer symptomatic patients. 8% say they never refer patients. Another 8% say that they do refer even asymptomatic patients. And about 15% stated other interestingly saying that they would only refer symptomatic patients to cardiologists or their PCPs, who in turn would be the ones to order any exercise stress test necessary for these patients as they felt necessary. And finally, in response to the question, when do you refer RA patients for a stress echo, um, either exercise or debutamin studies, about 70% said that they would only refer symptomatic patients while zero refer asymptomatic patients, 16% say never, and 16% said other, which is the same as the last question. They would refer symptomatic patients to the cardiologist or PCPs, who in turn would be the ones to order this exam for the patient if they, if indicated. Uh, so a big limitation of our study was obviously the low response rate, um, but we did learn that based on this study, the rheumatologists will primarily refer symptomatic patients for cardiac testing, which is discordant with the literature that we reviewed earlier on in this presentation, which alerts rheumatologists to the cardiovascular risks inherent in arthritis patients, even if they are asymptomatic. Additionally, for those rheumatologists that do recognize the need for referral, they are likely, they're more likely to direct their patients to a cardiologist for the actual referral of the exam. So maybe rheumatologists should be referring their patients themselves, or at the very least, educating their patients 
regarding their cardiovascular risks. So the takeaway we feel of this study is that there is a lack of established standards and therefore a glaring need for standard of care guidelines or recommendations for rheumatologists in addition to cardiologists to properly screen and treat their arthritis patients for cardiovascular risks. Also important to note is that insurances may not understand yet the need to cover the services referred for these patients by rheumatologists and they're used to covering EKGs or echoes that are only you know, requested by cardiologists or PCPs. And this may be the discouraging factor it, you know, for rheumatologists or other healthcare professionals from properly referring their patients, their rheumatoid arthritis patients for cardiac screening. But to conclude, um, rheumatoid arthritis patients do remain at a high risk of cardiovascular disease, which may go undetected due to low patient awareness of the cardiac risks lack of clinical trials available to the physicians, and a lack of clear guidance for rheumatologists to refer their patients for cardiac screening. We hope that our study increases the awareness of cardiac complications in the arthritis population and brings to light the disparity between risk and management of cardiac disease in patients suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. Cardiovascular disease has shown to be an oftentimes silent killer in the rheumatoid arthritis population, and we hope our research um, disrupts the silence and makes some noise regarding the life-saving importance of establishing a standard of care for these rheumatoid arthritis patients. These are our references. And we'd like to thank you very much for listening and for joining and um, helping to make life a little bit easier and healthy for our rheumatoid arthritis patients.